In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Whoa. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? Absolutely. Let's get present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant, it's just that they know so much that isn't so. Welcome to the Red State Town Hall Program. I'm your host, Primo Mondoni. My co-host, Ken Brown, will join me here in a couple minutes. Please visit the show's website at redstatetownhall.com. While you're there, be sure to like us on both Facebook and Twitter. Wish to contact us, the email address is primo, P-R-E-M-O, at redstatetownhall.com. 
The show is broadcast here on Red State Talk Radio, America's premier grassroots conservative internet talk radio network. The show is also syndicated through iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podomatic, TalkStream Live, Player.fm, Roku, and at least a dozen other websites. Uh, you can listen to the station using their Android, iPhone, and BlackBerry apps. Visit the station's website, redstatetalkradio.com, to download the appropriate app for your smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, you can listen using any phone on the station's 24-7 listener line, provided by TalkStream Live by, by dialing the following. Studio A, 605-562-4209, and for Studio B, 518-712-0045. Before we start the show, let's give a shout-out to our AM, FM, and digital affiliates. WDDQ FM 92.1, ADL, Georgia, WJNW, AM 1650, Hermes, Tennessee, Talk Radio AM 1620, KTFL, Gilbert, Arizona, WMQL Radio FM 105.5, Brevard, North Carolina, Kaufman County Talk Radio AM 1680, KCTR, Terrell, Texas, Tax Pro Radio, Gainesville, Georgia. Now let's bring on my co-host from Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Ken Brown. Mr. Brown, how are you today, sir? I'm good. Uh, congrats to the ladies' USA soccer team on winning the World Cup. Good yeah, fun. yeah. I'm I'm not a big soccer fan, of course. Uh, Me either. I don't but, think most Americans are really, to be honest with you. <laughs> but when you talk about soccer and you talk about you know USA's never been a real big soccer nation, but no. You know, uh, if we keep uh, allowing all these. Uh, <laughs> Folks from other parts of the world coming in uh, willy nilly over the border, then we might we might wind up, uh, you know, uh, that might be the, we may have soccer might be the number one sport in America pretty soon, you know, it could be. If they don't mind, Lee Leland's been on the team. Oh, that's not a problem. I'm, I'm sure that, problem. That, that would not, not be a problem at all. I don't not a problem think. unless uh, you know another country says you know, they can't do that. They're they're still, uh, you know, that, that that person over there is uh, he's from Guatemala. Uh, What's he doing? Yeah, there? he's on our team. He's on he's he's. Yeah, he's a uh, Latin uh, American. Whole another story, I guess. Uh, let's get started. A uh, lot to talk about. Gosh, first off the bat, let's talk about the situation in Greece. It's gotten—I don't know if it's worse, or better. Uh, sounds like maybe they're going to strike a deal with the Germans, but um, I don't know. I don't think it really matters a hell of a lot. If if they do, it'll, it'll simply be a band-aid on the problems. It's not going to fix anything, Ken. And so this whole thing of the, of the Eurozone and all that stuff, and I, th- I think it was a mistake that they should, they should have never even went down that path to start with. And I'm not just talking about Greece. I'm talking about all of Europe. I think it was a mistake. Um, well, I think it's a, um, the person, the people at Hearst is the ones that – carry the load which is the germans yeah yeah i mean they're they're the ones that are uh and the and the greeks apparently have no problem with someone else uh helping them live their lifestyle that, that they choose well, to lead you know that's a, a socialistic deal isn't it once you start getting free stuff that other people are paying for you, you don't want to get that taken away from you well you know the thing about the germans that uh, a lot of people i don't think understand when it comes to you know there's statistics all across the the, the globe about what companies spend money and what 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 people save money, and the Germans have always, for a long long time, have always been one of the most saving uh, populations on the planet. I remember reading an article years ago that said that most Americans only saved about two to three percent of their income, and 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 probably that's probably less now. To be honest with you. But Germans, and this is years ago, but I'd be willing to bet it's pretty close to this. Germans had the highest savings rate of any nation on the planet, and they were at 30 and uh, 40%, depending on which way you measured it and stuff. So, I mean, they, th- these people are frugal with their money, and they save money, and they do like a lot of people used to do in this country – is you don't buy something until you have the money to buy it. You don't necessarily go out and, and finance it and, and borrow money. You save your money and you get what you want. Uh, you have to you have to delay your, grat- your gratification a little bit, but you eventually get what you want through patience and and being smart with your money. That's the Germans. I remember doing that. I remember my mom doing that, uh, putting something on layaway. Uh, remember layaway? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you never. Yep. Uh, I, bet, I bet the younger folks never, never even heard of that term, but that's, uh, a, that's a poor man's way of financing in a way. Well, of. I mean, you you didn't get 
you didn't actually get the product until you paid for it. But it was but set aside, go, though. You had it set aside. Yeah, yeah she would go to, go to the store, I think, every week, and she would do something. I'd, I'd go with her, and I'd go, what are you doing? I said, we go to the store and, and come out empty-handed. You know, I kept thinking, why don't we even go to the store if we're not going to buy something? <laughs> and and she said, no, I'm putting, I've am uh, i got a refrigerator on layaway. And I went, what does that mean? So she had explained it to me. And you know, I was like, oh, see, it's a, you're paying for it little by little. And once you paid for it, then you can pick it up or then they'll deliver it. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. Made well, sense to me. I, I know some friends when I was younger that they did their Christmas stuff that way. They would do all their kids. Like, let's say the kids wanted some, some toys. Now, here's the problem. As soon as Christmas came, they would start doing layaway for the next Christmas. Now, I'm not sure how the hell they knew what the kid wanted, but I guess they kind of knew that he wanted it that year, but they couldn't afford it. So they went ahead and got it and put it away and started paying for it. And they would do like their entire Christmas so that when Christmas came, they weren't out of money. It was already paid for. And, and they might might have everything paid for, like in September, October, or whatever the deal was. And they'd already have everything paid for, wrapped, and ready to go. And so there wasn't a big pressure at Christmas to come up with the money, which I guess made sense, you know. To, well, I mean, to that, wouldn't that be a good <clears throat> way to do it for our country? Yeah, well, we're not, you know, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. It's, you know, but it's a simple thing. You know, the liberals always think, let's, let's buy it now, buy it now, pay for it later. You know, yeah. we'll figure out a way to pay for it later. I'm like, wait a minute now, we're $18 trillion in debt now. And we're just going to keep going like we're going. And when does someone actually put the stop button on us? Well, well, here's the thing. I think you're close to your analogy, except there's one, one little, one little problem with your analogy. The liberals are like, one, give it to one. me, yeah, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, and they don't give a damn if it ever gets paid off or not. Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe so. Um, <laughs> no, they don't, they don't care until you know. It's not it's, their problem. Yeah, and it, and when it, with the other things you've left out is like, well, we didn't do that. Yeah, we, no, we didn't do that. That I'm wasn't still, me. I'm that still was somebody am- else that did that. I'm still amazed at people who do the they do the on the street interviews. And just recently, I, I heard another one. Remember the famous thing before the election, and they were talking about uh, the Obama phones and and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And they were talking to this this uh, black lady in the line, and and she's mm-hmm. talking about the Obama stash. Didn't know where he got the money from, but it, it must be his stash. Yeah, yeah, and, stash. And and. <laughs> The guys asked him, like, well, what do you mean his stash? What? I don't know, man. I, don't you realize that's taxpayer? No, I don't, I don't know who, whose money that is. It, it's just his it's stash. And so I thought, well, that's just one <laughs> stupid individual who has no idea what the hell's going on. Well, I heard that same thing just recently on a, like, I don't know if it was Jesse Waters or who it was, but it was something along those lines. And they asked them, well, the government – basically, the th- answer was, well, the government will pay for it. It's not, it's not a big deal. The government will pay for it. The government's got plenty of money. The government will pay for it. And, and literally, the guy goes, who do you think – where do you think the government gets the money? Yeah. It's not the government. And they money. had no clue. He said, he, And the guy goes, I don't know. He goes, no, seriously. Where do you think the government gets the money to pay for all these programs and all these things? He said, I have no idea. And, <laughs> and that was the honest God's truth. The guy had no yeah, idea. Yeah, I bet he didn't. He I mean, had no idea. He it's like uh, you told a story when you were working in the uh, boys' uh, home, yeah, right. about the kid that says, "I want to be like my grandmother or my mom or whatever." Get a job of the government. Yeah, I want to get that check in the mail every month. I, I mean, you go out there and open the the, the, the mailbox. Box. And there's a check on the third of every month. Her it's job magic. was to go to the mailbox on the third of every month and, and get a check. That's, yeah, it's and magic, that's, and that's the kind of job he wanted. Yeah. I will, I will go to the mailbox and get my money. Yeah. They don't care about where the money comes from. Mm-mm. As long as it comes to them and they don't do anything for it. Yeah, I just, you know, I wonder sometimes, you know, the whole thing about uh, volunteering or something, if you're going to get a, a check and, 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 and being drug tested, you know, if you're going to get a check, all those things are probably good things. But I'm just wondering at what limit, for people who who live like that, I wonder at what limit, what would they be willing to do, and what would they not be willing to do in order to get a check? In other words, where is the where's the, where do they draw the line? It's like, well, I'll do that, but I'm not going to do that. That's just too much work. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just I wonder. 
I wish somebody would do a survey and say, if, if to get your check, would you do this? And it'd be something real simple. And most people would go, well, yeah, I would do that. But then start increasing the the the, uh, the level a little bit and make it a little bit more a little tougher. And I just wonder at what point where everybody would say, "Oh no, I, that's I, that's not. I'm not going to do that." Yeah. Well, I, I I'll give you an example because uh, I'm a teacher that every year you have to reapply for your kids to get free or reduced lunches and right. breakfasts. Right. And um, Every it never fails. Every year, parents forget they have to re reapply have to, to fill out the form again. To uh, something simple, form. filling out a form that nobody's Process. ever going to check in the first place. Exactly. So anyway, they they uh, they're sent letters home, and a lot of people don't don't read. And the letters say you need to reapply, you know, for this, 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 but the, for two weeks to have a grace period. You know, they get right. kids lunch and exactly. breakfast. So after those two weeks, they've, they've taken the forms they've gotten in, and they've you know processed them, and then they've got them on the system. Well, after that two weeks, then it, it goes into, well, if you're not in the system, the new system, uh, then you're, <laughs> you got to start paying. Well, here comes the parents, and they go, I got free lunch. My kid got free lunch last year, and the year before that, the year before that, the year before that, and free breakfast. Why is he why getting to pay now? I don't know. Because man, you got to send your form back and get that process. Well, no one told me that. Oh, yes, we we sent notes home about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, same but, thing but, every year. But they're upset because they've been getting free stuff. And I can tell you, being a teacher and and going through it, that that half of them, if not most of them, can pay for their kids lunches oh yeah i have absolutely no doubt about that and, and they don't do that because they fill the forms out and no one checks the forms and everybody but, and, and did you not say that when it comes to like your gross family income everybody puts zero most Virtu- of them virtually zero. every single one almost a lot of them put zero a lot of them put just a little you know a little bit if you put a little bit you know of course you you'll have reduced uh lunch you the reduced fee for lunch if you put you making zero or next to zero and your kid gets free lunch, of course. Um, yeah. and, and for a while there, when they first started it, people were worried about it. They were like, oh, they're going to come out and get me because I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm they, thought, they, thought, they thought somebody would actually check it and you could get in trouble. Yeah. Then yeah. they realized yeah. nobody checks anything. And this and they, yeah, they, they realized that, that, um, that Joe next door has put zero down for years and years and no one's ever come knocking on his door. So, he, has, he has a better house and better cars than you do, so he's, <laughs> he's not paying. I'm, I'm paying for half a lunch, you know, and he's paying for no lunch all year, no breakfast all year, and my, I'm paying. Why should I pay a little bit when he's paying nothing? And and I know that you know he makes more than I do. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons he has a nicer house and better cars because he's not paying for the lunch. He never has. Well, I'm for, all, for all his kids, you know, it's like. Yeah, why why not do the same thing he's doing? Because nobody's going to check on him. What the heck? Right. I shouldn't I shouldn't be able to pay for something. Uh, it's just it's it's just and you know what do you teach? And then the worst thing about all of it to me is here goes your child walking through the line and they barely even stop. They don't they don't they don't they don't even. I mean, once the the lady that's that's take that's uh, checking them out, yeah. it recognizes them. Yeah, you know we got a small school. They can think after a while they, they all know each other. Um, they just go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, and you don't stop and reach in your pocket and pull out that quarter or a dollar or whatever you know you should be paying for. These kids just go through the line and they without hardly even stopping. And what are you teaching the kids? There is a free lunch. There is a free breakfast. And they're and they're taught that. Uh... Uh, th- they're not even taught to even be thankful f- for the fact that they're getting that because it's nothing to them and they've never had to do anything or sacrifice no. or budget their no. money. I mean, you're not even teaching a, a child basic budgeting. Like, like for example, no, you're teaching entitlement. That's what you're teaching. Yeah. That's what you're teaching. You're teaching them how to be dependent on the government. Literally is what you're teaching them. Yeah. You're teaching them entitlement that they deserve it, that they should get it no matter what, because, that's just the way you do things. Just because you're um, breathing and you're here in the school, you deserve this. But on the flip side, and I know we're 
going off the topic here, but on the flip side of that, it makes it even worse is the kids that do pay for it. If they forget their money one day, well, guess what they get? What? They get a peanut butter sandwich. They, they get a, a little sandwich or, or something that's, you know, if they're not. So, so the school has to feed them something because they don't want to be, you know, they, yeah, they, child they don't, they don't go lunch. hungry, but they don't get the same as the free kids get. They get something different. So you go, they go sit down and the kids around them who are getting free lunches are looking at the kid that just happened to forget his money that day. Who, who usually pays for lunch every day, who does the right thing. And he get he didn't get a, a lunch like all the other free kids. He gets something different that makes him stand out. And the kids go, oh, you didn't pay. Oh, you get the peanut butter sandwich. Oh. If that, were, <laughs> if that, if that would be, I'd turn around to, to the kid next to him and say, you, damn it, you didn't pay any damn thing. That's for damn sure. <laughs> no, but you don't, those kids don't know that. Yeah, kids, I know. You know they supposedly don't know, but the reality is they talk to each other. They all know who the hell. The thing is, this whole, you know, the whole idea of everybody in the school wearing the same uniform and stuff like that. A lot of people do that. A lot of schools do that. We what do I've, that. What I've always, well, but what I've always maintained about that is the kids all know which families have money and which ones don't. Just because I have the same uniform on as you, if your dad makes a lot more money than my dad makes, I know that you know that. Yeah. It doesn't really. It's 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 like it's like normal progressive policies. It's to make everybody supposedly feel good, which it actually doesn't do a damn thing. Because well, it's not it's, fooling anybody, really. Yeah, it's, it, it, it just, it, you, it does do some things in, in the fact that uh, while you're at school, mm. you don't say, oh, look at your, oh, look at those pants you got on. You go, oh, yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't have that. You don't have the stuff that's immediate. You don't have, the, you know, the, the things you can look right at somebody and go, oh, look at your, Look at that shirt. You you know, when I was a kid, the thing that, that made that t- could tell whether or not you had any kind of money at all or whether or not you were poor? Tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Exactly. And this is before Jordans and all that stuff. I mean, we, we go back a long time, Ken. But this is back when you had, back in that day, the, the big thing you wanted to have was a Converse. It was Converse. Converse. Then it was not, Pro Keds. Pro Keds, and eventually. And what was the one that made you jump higher and run faster? What was that one? Remember that one? I cannot remember the name. I of remember that. that. I don't know who. who uh, PF well, Flyers. PF oh. Flyers. Remember those? <laughs> well, those weren't. Those were never a status symbol. No, they weren't status symbol. But Converse was. And I remember one time because uh, we were poor. I didn't have Converses normally. And I remember one time in school, I had on some little cheap, like Dollar General, uh, tennis shoes with a really slick plastic bottom. You know. They yeah. were not the type that gripped on the floor. If you were playing basketball, you'd go sliding all the way up to the stands, you know, right, right. kind of stuff. And this black kid I knew, we were kind of buddies, and he looked at he looked at my shoes. He goes, "Man, where'd you get those buddies?" And I said, "I said what?" He said, "Those buddies." He said, "Your shoes." He said, "That's what we call buddies." He said, "He, goes, he said you would even want your worst buddy to have those things on." <laughs> <laughs> and that stuck with you, didn't oh, it? Oh, that stuck in my head. And uh, literally, the first Converse's I ever had, Ken, I swear to God, I bought them myself by mowing yards and doing yard work, doing whatever I had to do so I could get me my own pair of Converse because my poor little grandmother couldn't afford to buy me Converse's. So I bought them I re- myself. I remember buy, buying shoes, and even when they didn't have my size, I would get the next size bigger. Because I wanted that style. If they didn't have that that shoe, I, and I had to have that shoe, I would get the next size. And I was tripping over myself, you know, because it was yeah. the shoe was too big. But I I wanted to have that, you know, that shoe. That's yeah. That I simple. never did that. I always got the right size, but still. I figured I'll grow into it, you know. But when you're, when you're a kid, eventually I'll grow into it. And yeah. Of course, I stopped after a while, but um. Well, when you're when your kids uh, shoes don't last long. I mean, you turn. I mean, all the stuff we did. All the ball playing we did, at least that you know, no, no kids don't play ball anymore like that. I don't think for the most part. Anyway, it's it's it, God, we got way off track. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's talk about the uh, Hillary and Bernie real quick. Bernie a mania is running wild as Hillary Clinton's campaign is sputtering. Um, this is an article on the Boston Herald that uh, I posted on RedStateTalkRadio.com this week. Um, 
Now, I know that Hillary is the de facto Democratic nominee, assuming she doesn't blow up, which could be because, oh, by the way, uh, speaking of blowing up, I don't know if you saw this story or not. I posted this. I don't know if I posted on the website, but I think I posted on Facebook. uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton are both being going to have to give depositions into this RICO case against the Clinton Foundation about all the money. That's on, that's going to be on June 28th. Good. Uh, one of them's going to, Bill's going to be on the 28th and Hillary's going to be on the 29th. Now here's the good thing about this is they have to give a deposition as to what their testimony is, as to what happened with all the money, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the problem for Bill and Hillary as good a liars as Bill is, especially Bill. Bill's really a good liar. He doesn't know what they know. Oh. And she so, doesn't either, unless someone leaks it to him. So the point is, when they get them up there and they get their, their deposition and get them on the record saying, this is this, and this is this, and this is this, mm-hmm. then they come out and go, you died. <laughs> yeah. That's not the way it happened. We we have proof. We have emails. We have this. We have that. We have documentation proven. Blah 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 blah. And uh, well, speaking of speaking of lying, should be fun. Should be fun. Well, speaking of lying, you know, Hillary has just now started talking to the press again. At least she started talking to CNN. Yeah, the and girl that was got, that one at a wedding. They were that they're, they're like bud, buds. Oh well, you know she said asked some pretty good questions. A few for, a few good ones. Not not a lot, but a few. Yeah. But she was asked about, of course, you know, the uh, um, being subpoenaed. And Hillary said, no, she was never subpoenaed. Benghazi. Never, Talking about Benghazi now. Right. Yeah, never subpoenaed. And then. Um, uh, the, Trey Gaddis. B- Boehner, actually, <clears throat> Boehner put out the subpoena. He actually fo- um, scanned the subpoena and scanned put, it on, put it online. Put it on Facebook, and it's all over Facebook. I mean, the, the lady. <sighs> They ask her, you know, why do you think you're not being not being trusted? The sixty percent of the American people don't trust you. She goes, well, well that's all because you know of, uh, our history, uh, uh, the right wing's conspiracy always up against us. My my husband, all no, ma'am, it's because you lie, and your husband lies, and they don't trust you because you are a liar. It it kills me. <laughs> they just kill you when she gets there and she keeps doing it. See, that's the thing is that Bill was a good was good at lying. She's not. Oh, she's she's and and, yeah. and people don't. I, and I'll I'll stand on this. I'll put my hand on the Bible. I don't think if you ask and you got the truth for most of the Democrats out there right now, most of them wouldn't want her in there anyway. That they that's not their choice. But they're, they know they're, they're stuck with her. Yeah, they're, right they're, now. exactly. Their problem is they're basically stuck because and if she, if she goes down, they have no chance. Well, they, I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. I, th- I think you need to. It's not Bernie Sanders. You know, they know Bernie Sanders didn't have a, a prayer unless you, you know, the whole country was like New Hampshire, but we're not. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, you got to look at Biden or whoever, somebody out there, Kerry again, Lord. Or what's, what's the guy, they're talk, what's, like you said, Biden, uh, what's the guy from the governor that's in the race uh, from Maryland? Tacky? No. Tacky's New York. Well, yeah, he... You know, uh, yeah, I think he's running too. Officially announced he's running, didn't he or not? I'm not sure. I think he said he was. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with the Democrats because really everybody's focusing on Hillary. It's like it doesn't really matter who the hell else is running. Now here's here's the thing: if she has to drop out because of Benghazi or the Clinton Foundation money or whatever, if she's forced out, then ever then it'll then the Democrat race will get interesting. It'll be like. Okay, now who can take advantage of this and and come on strong to at least provide a challenge to whoever's going to be the Republican nominee? So, yeah, <clears throat> uh, but I think yeah, I think they're wasting. If I was Biden, or I was, I don't know if I'd be, Kerry would do it, but um, if I was Biden, I'd get into the race now. I would I, put my name out there now. I would I would say, hey, I'm I'm in this. You know so, what? I, I think they, I think he's better off not doing it. And if she falls, come he, come, he comes in as a savior. Oh, yeah. I, I don't really want to do it, but for the good of the party and for the good of the country, I'll do it. And then also, and then everybody has to rally around him or whoever it's going to, it's going to be. Uh, I think it might not. That might be the best move to to to. to Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we're running a little late. Let's go ahead and go to our break. 
We appreciate everyone listening to the Red State Town Hall program. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, this is Jeff Carlisi from the band 38 Special. The mainstream media has failed the American people once again. Internet radio networks like Red State Talk Radio will not fail you. Tune in 24 hours a day. Studios A and B. Great conservative programming around the clock. Red State Talk Radio, the dominant force in Internet conservative talk radio. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich, working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare, having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to Freedom36.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to Freedom36.com right now and change your life today. That's Freedom, the number, 36.com. Go to Freedom36.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to Freedom36.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-400-1756 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-400-1756 to take your call now. Call 800-400-1756. That's 800-400-1756. Again, 800-400-1756. If you're diabetic, this message could change your life. Is your blood sugar out of control even when you do all the right stuff? Are you afraid of diabetic blindness and the risk of amputation, as well as all those other side effects? Well, you should be. Is there anything that could help manage your blood sugar? Nobetes is a natural supplement that may quickly and dramatically lower your blood sugar. My name is Bob Porter. I've been using Nobetes for about three and a half to four months now. And in the first three months, I've actually lowered my blood sugars from 500 down to 139, and then it dropped to 88 to 93. My name is Kirsten. I'm a type 1 diabetic, and while taking Nobetes, my blood sugar levels dropped from 295 to 115 in just one day. The FDA hasn't evaluated these statements, and Nobetes isn't intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But for many, it's helped drop their blood sugar. So if you've been evaluated with high blood sugar, don't delay. Evaluate Nobetes now. Call 800-554-7159 and get two bottles free. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-554-7159. That's 800-554-7159. Hi, this is Primo Mondoni, General Manager for Red State Talk Radio. We've been bringing you the very best in grassroots, common sense, conservative talk radio for over five years now. One thing I've learned in those five years is that internet radio is a tough compared to business. And if the station is going to advance that next level, it's going to require a significant increase in investments in both personnel and infrastructure. Our listenership grew by 42% in 2014, and with our ever-expanding listener base, it's time that we begin the move to a more listener-supported model to provide the station's future financial needs. Therefore, we're asking our loyal listeners to consider making a donation to help us reach our goals. Monthly subscriptions begin at only $2 per month. So please, help us restore conservative principles to our republic. Visit our website and become a Red State Talk Radio supporter today. Red State Talk Radio. The Talk Monster. The path to restoring our republic was laid down by our founding fathers. The principles of freedom, liberty, personal responsibility, and limited government are conservative ideals we will never abandon. America is listening. Grassroots. Common sense. Conservative talk radio. It's on the Internet. Tune in now. 
Red State Talk Radio, featuring some of the most popular Internet talk show hosts in America today. Are you listening? RedStateTalkRadio.com. Okay, we're back. Uh, <laughs> have you seen this deal where the USA Today, I, I post an article on the website, RedStateTalkRadio.com. USA Today is reporting that the Army plans to cut an additional 40,000 troops, Ken, to our military. I don't think that's a surprise in my book. Well, no, it's not a surprise. I'm just amazed that we're not getting. There's not enough kickback on this. I would think that the American people, at some point, would go, "Wait a minute, what are we doing?" With, with all the threats we face with Russia and Iran and China, and North Korea, and and. ISIS and I mean Al Qaeda and blah blah blah. I mean, this makes no sense. I'll tell you what it is, Ron. And you and you know as well as I do that we ha- it's because we haven't. If, if it was on our shores, if we had a nine eleven, we had something like that that happened here, then that would be a up in arms. Oh no, we can't do that. But if it's overseas, if it's it, ISIS, a lot of it's not don't affecting care. us. Yeah, the, most people are watching. You know, TV and stuff, they don't care. It's, it's, you know, ISIS, who's ISIS? Well, you know, Reagan's policy was peace through strength. Apparently, Obama's policy is peace through bending over. That's, that's, well, I feel like that's what we're doing. We're like, come on. Well, I, I think this man is, you know, he's a Muslim, uh, Islamic sympathizer at the very least. Um, he doesn't, uh, ever say Islamic terrorists? He says we're not. It, we won't. We weren't, and will not never be at war with Islam. I mean, this guy is a someone. Uh, hey, should someone should tell Islam that? I, <laughs> I, it's it, nothing's nothing's going to change until this man is out of office. Right. Yeah. And that's and and uh, and that's in a many many ways. That's not just militarily. And the problem is. Uh, Regardless of all the stuff he's done, he's not going to be leaving office until January 2017. There's no way, even though he, I, he should have been impeached long ago. Oh, yeah. He should have been charged with crimes long ago. But it's he's got the path. There, there's even an argument you may make, Ken, that he has committed treason against the United States. Oh, I, I, I totally believe that. And, and, um, um, I, ever since he... Ever since he went to Egypt and gave that speech, uh, and then he started bowing down to other leaders, um, I'm like, what? What are you doing? I, 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 you're a president of the United States. What are What are you doing? You're You're subservient to people. You're You're act, You're apologizing to people. I, I'm sorry. I it just he's he's been an it's been a, a shameful thing to watch. Oh, wow. uh, it's embarrassing. As as you and I who grew up <clears throat> and we lived through the Reagan years and to see what well, this country's gone from Reagan to this, it's we've gone from the pinnacle to the trash heap. Um and in just a few a couple decades. Yeah. Uh speaking of uh well this isn't this isn't the same but it kind of ties in if you, if you pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say here. And I, I actually heard another host bring this up on Red State Talk Radio. Uh, one of the guys on Russell from Behind Enemy Lines actually brought this up on his show that played yesterday. I was listening to the show. And he, he brought up something I had never thought of. I mean, I kind of knew it, but I hadn't really thought of it in the, in the way he termed it. And, and think about this. <clears throat> One of the reasons about all the illegal immigrants and all that kind of stuff is not just for voters. Uh, of course, that's part of it. But this has been going on, the illegal immigration thing. Like, in, for example, in New York, let's just use New York as an example. There are a lot of illegal immigrants in the, in the city of New York. And therefore, mm-hmm. they're in the state of New York, of course, right? And mm-hmm. what he was trying to point out is, the Democratic Party, in a way, and plus people in New York, don't really care if they vote or not. And, and here's the reason why. 
all the representation, all the money and stuff that's contributed to every state when it comes to dividing up the money is based on population. And oh. so they don't really care if they're voting or whatever. It doesn't matter what their opinions are. It doesn't matter. It's just that they have a bigger population, and so they get a two things. Cut. Two, yeah, two, three things happen. You get a bigger cut of federal money, number one. Number two, you get better representation in the House of Representatives because the bigger, because the populate the the number of representatives in the House of Representatives is not based on, it, it's based on the U.S. Census. And the census counts you whether you're here legally or not. They're right. counting people, not citizens. Right. Okay? That, that's, a, that's a good distinction. People, not yep. citizens. So you have better representation so you can force your agenda more effectively by having more votes in the House from your state. And number three, and I hadn't thought about this one, because of, of all that, the Electoral College is essentially based on the same thing. Mm. So when you got California and you got New York with huge immigrant populations, with about probably half of them being Ill, in here this country illegally, if they keep going at the rate they're going, you might be able to win the presidency with electoral college. I mean, right now it's already down to, if you have California and New York, you only need about four or five other states to get 270 votes. The electoral college. So, think about this. Think of, uh, uh, for example, Texas. Think about uh, Phoenix. I mean, Arizona. I mean, you, it could it could just get ridiculous, and you'd never, a, never, ever have an opportunity to win an election again if you're not of the right political persuasion. Well, I think that's why Hillary's running. Yeah. Because uh, because of what you just said, because she knows that in her back pocket she's going to get New York, she's going to get California. Yeah, that's that's a done deal. I mean, she she doesn't even have to. She wouldn't even have to go and campaign there. She doesn't. She doesn't have to no. do anything. She can no. spend all her time going to other states. Yeah, she can go to Ohio and to Florida and those places that that give her the. Just over the edge. All she needs to go is, is over the edge to over oh, two seventy two to, to win. So it's not a, um, it, it's not a big uphill climb for her. Right. Whereas it is for on the other side of the coin, because right. you don't have California, and Ohio. I mean California and New York in your back pocket. Here, here's the thing: if you took the electoral college and took California and Ohio out, and just did the other forty eight states, I don't think the Democrats could win win an election. No. Yeah, if you take California and New York, yeah. Yeah, if you took them out of the equation, and it's just the other 48 states, because if you look at the map and look at the uh, red states versus blue states, there's a hell of a lot more red states. Of course, the, a lot of the red states don't have as near as much population. California's huge. Florida, I mean, North, New York is big, too. Uh, of course, Texas is pretty big, and it's been going blue, but that's one of the reasons about the whole immigration thing is they're wanting to turn Texas blue. That's, that's really what's going on there as far as Texas goes. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, anyway. Well, that's what I'm saying. With Hillary, no, you know, 60% of people don't trust her. But does that really matter because you're because of the electoral college? I don't know. I've always, I've always thought the electoral college was a good thing uh, because it, uh, level the level the playing field. Level the playing field. A lot of small states and stuff. And uh, but now I'm starting to wonder. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure what to think now. And, and I'm 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 afraid that popular vote's not necessarily the, the best answer either. I'm, I'm not sure how how the hell we're going to do this. Well, uh, it's not going to matter, Primo. It's not going to matter if you don't enforce your voter laws. If you don't enforce voter laws and actually only have people who are in the, in this country legally at, as citizens voting, it doesn't really matter what the hell we do. Like, you're, yeah. you're right. You're right on that. You're absolutely and, right. And, and the immigration laws, you're not enforcing the immigration laws, which which in turn, you know, uh, affect the voter law, voter um, input, output stuff. I, it's not going to work. It's not going to. It's that's not going to matter. So. Uh, the talk about immigration that's going to be you know big topic you know, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that here in just a minute about Donald Trump and what's going on there but uh, <laughs> okay let's get to that well, one real quick thing then we'll talk, talk about Trump 
uh, <laughs> there was a the, the Iranian situation. They had a meltdown this past week. I don't know if you know this or not, but the Iranian Prime Minister and John Kerry got into a screaming match in, in Vene- uh, Vienna this past week. And it was so bad that people out in the halls could hear what they were saying. And literally, the, the Iranian Prime Minister said to John Kerry, never threaten an Iranian. And... Of course, the negotiations kind of broke down. They did another extension. I think this is the third extension, and we're, they're supposed to have some, do something by Monday. But they'll, the Obama administration wants a, a deal so bad, they'll give another extension if they have to. And I'm not worried about that in terms of will they not. Uh, I don't think the Obama administration has the guts to walk away and say, no, nah, we can't work with these guys. And no, I because I don't think that will happen. But, uh, but here's the good thing about the Iranian deal. When the Iranian said never threaten an Iranian, after this was said and the word got around this was said and all the other countries knew what was going on, one one of the Russian delegates said, uh, he said, well, let me make sure that everybody knows never threaten a Russian either. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he said it and everybody started laughing and joking because, uh, of course, Russia could actually do something about it, kind of, you know, more so than, than, than uh, the Iranians. The Iranians are really not a real threat in terms of, unless they get a nuke, then of course they, they are a threat. And so that's the whole point of the, the negotiations, of course. But, uh, but I just think it's funny that you got Kerry and the Iranian prime minister uh, just going at it. And everybody keeps talking about, you know, we're working really hard on this deal. And this, I mean, I, just, I don't know. Well, I, not no deal because Obama's, Obama's, um, foreign policy is in shambles. Oh, yeah. And he, he has to have something that he can stick in his presidential library after he's um, out of the office that, you know, look what I did, which yeah. which is going to be a piece of crap for the for us and the rest of the world. Right. Okay, we got about nine minutes left. Let's just go ahead and talk about the Trump factor. Uh, number one, there's a new national poll that came out. The Hill is reporting a new national poll that came out uh, this week showing that Trump is leading all Republican presidential candidates. He's leading Bush about 4 or 5%, 3%, whatever it was. And Bush was in the lead, had a significant lead. And before this poll came out, Trump had bounced up to number two in North Carolina, just a North Carolina poll. But now he's number one in a national, first national poll that he's been number one in. Um, and it really all boils down to one issue that Trump has been harping on, and that's illegal immigration. And he's playing it pretty smart. You have to give the guy credit. He's going into places where illegal immigration is really a problem, like, for example, Arizona. He was in Phoenix uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, and there were over 10,000 people showed up. And I saw a photo of it on, on, on the web. I mean, the place was packed, Ken. I'm not talking oh. about how when someone shows up for a Hillary thing, and most of them are bought and paid for, and they only show the crowd close to Hillary to make it look like it's big. But then when you take a shot of the arena, there's all these empty seats. That was not the case. This was a shot of the entire arena, and it was packed and standing room only. And there were people outside who could not get in. What I heard was thousands of people were standing outside who could not get into the event. So he's starting to jail a little bit. And, and, and here's the thing. I, th- I think a lot of people are not sure if they want Donald Trump to be president, but what a lot of people are attracted to is the fact that he just tells it like it is. Whether or not you agree with him or not, that's really kind of besides the point. He just says, like I, I, we were talking before the show, if he, whatever topic he's talking about, he goes, well, we got to quit doing this, we got to quit doing that. That's stupid. We're just not going to do that. And then, and, then and we got to do this, we got to do that, and we can't do that, we can't do that. I mean, he just said, like, real common sense, just like, well, 
that's stupid. This is a smart way to do it, and blah, 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 blah. And, and again, whether or not you agree with him or not, at least he 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 just kind of cuts through all the crap, you know? And people are really attracted to that because you know the normal political speech where you try not to step on anybody's damn toes and you try to you try to answer the question without actually answering the question. That's what most politicians do. I mean, you know that. And so but Trump actually answers the question and he does it in a way that uh is so unusual. And refreshing day, and refreshing in this day and time. The thing that scares me, though, and about <laughs> Donald Trump, yeah, I know. <laughs> the thing that scares me is that he's going to not get the nomination, and he's going to run as a third party, and that's going to be the end of the, and that'll <sighs> open the door to whoever, and if it's not Hillary, it'd be whoever's, whoever's in that, you know, just happens to be the Democratic nominee, because Donald's not going to take the Democratic vote away. He's, that's not going to happen. He's going to take away conservative votes. He's going to take away um, Republican votes. Well, the That's thing about Donald right now, Donald, for example, Donald's right now. I mean, you talk about flip flopping. Donald has flip flopped on almost everything. Just, just the example. I was, I was saw an a video uh, of a few years back where he was all for Obamacare. And he was all for universal health care. Now he says Obamacare has got to go. It needs to be repealed, et cetera, et cetera. And just a few years ago, he was all for it. Of course, at that time he was not a candidate. He was just speaking as a. Yeah, but I've you know. also heard him say that he that the, we should have national health care. That, that that's where. Yeah, basically, he, he well, he his position is yeah, Obamacare needs to be repealed and replaced, but with something that actually works and that it, it needs to be to where everyone can have health care. So he's he is talking about national health care, but he wants to do it more so in a private mode, private sector mode, not through the government, which. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Now, I'd like to know the details, of course. And and the thing is, Donald has no details on anything because Donald is not a details guy. Donald is a big picture guy, and he say he says this is what I want done, and he goes to his people in his organization and goes, get it done. <laughs> he's he's like a Steve Jobs type kind of guy that. Um, he gets results by putting pressure on people around him to get it done and. If he doesn't like it, he fires them and gets somebody else. Um, yeah. And, and that's, you know, that, uh, if nothing else right now, he brings a lot of attention to the Republican Party. And good, Republican good, Party or should, bad, good or bad. Yeah, and, and, and they that. should be, they should welcome that right now because he, he makes the 2016 race relevant right now, which is right. And it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 uh, and uh, that goes along with uh, uh, the debates. He's going to be on the stage, and, and oh, it, people, he's going to be. He's because people the, the will turn team, in that first yeah. Fox debate. He he definitely because he's number one of the polls. He's going to be there. I'm going to watch because I'm I'm you know I'm politically inclined, but that's you're going to get people watching this right. that don't care anything about anything other than Donald Trump. They yeah. want to watch Donald Trump. They want the the guy they've seen on The Apprentice. <laughs> They don't. They've never watched the base before. If they had, they've watched maybe two or three minutes of it, and they've turned the channel. This time, they'll watch, and they'll probably watch the whole freaking thing to see what Donald says. Well, there are we people that watch this first debate with Fox because Donald's definitely going to be in, in the in the mix. And like you said, there will be people who maybe never watched a political debate in their entire life mm. who will watch this thing, mm -hmm. and it could be one of the highest rated. Well, it'll probably be one of the highest rated debates of all time, but it could be one of the highest rated television uh, programs. And, and and the good thing about that to me is that, okay, they're going to watch for Donald, but guess what? What an opportunity. What an opportunity they'll, for the other candidates. They'll get to hear Ted Cruz. They'll get you'll to get, hear Rubio. They'll get to Rubio. You get, uh, you hopefully get to Ted hear, Cruz. Hopefully Rubio, yeah. Right. And if you've never listened to them before <laughs> – yeah, you get to hear them and go, oh well, that, oh, that I like that guy. I like the way he's the way he talks. I like the way he thinks. And they never would have listened to him before because they don't watch those TV shows. Or they don't watch, you know, they, all they watch is CNN and they all hear the, the bad stuff about those candidates. Right. They right. just might be turned on to somebody. Well, like, like for example, let's, let's say a, a question is thrown out. Donald gets the first crack at. It. And Donald Trump gives his normal thing where he talks mostly about himself, and then he, he gives some kind of glib answer with no details, but it sounds good and it makes you feel good. 
and that's fine. But then next, someone else will speak. It might be Ted Cruz. It might be whoever. And the point is that the way they answer it, and they answer it in a much better fashion with some details and some and some and something you can sink your teeth into, like you said, they're going to go, hey, that makes a lot of sense. I like what Donald said, but this guy, he actually has a plan. He actually has a way of doing this. He actually, you know, that, I think that could be golden for the Republican Party. It's, it's an opportunity that doesn't come around, um, but once in a blue moon, and it's, it's golden, golden for somebody to, to be sitting on the stage with, with Donald and, yep. and, and take it take above Donald. Of it. Yeah. Yes. And, and go and, above his, his glib answer that he will always have. Yeah. Where when when Donald if he drops out or whatever whatever happens to him you go well, I like that what Rubio said I like the way he talked I like the way Ted Cruz you know whatever it is whoever it is that yeah. takes advantage of it and it could be I'm not saying it's going to be Rubio or Cruz it could be somebody else could be Ben Carson could be who, it know. could be Huckabee it could be anybody <laughs> yeah. I mean it, it could be they could take advantage of that um, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully that that people the people won't take advantage of it. it won't be Bush and won't be Christie. Yeah, I'll be okay with the rest of them. Well, I don't think Christie. I don't think Christie's even going to be on the stage. I, I don't think that'd be nice. Oh, that'd be great. At least on he, this first debate. I, well, I they can't. Say. They couldn't have him on the stage because they wouldn't, you know, physically get anybody else on the stage. <laughs> okay, enough of the fact. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, we're out of time. Gosh, already, already. I feel. Are you uh, right. you want to take us out, Ken? I'll take you off topic. Yes. Yeah. If we lose freedom here, there is no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. Ronald Wilson Reagan, our 40th president of these United States. That's it. We're out of here. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. The leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on warranty and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602.